So this is uh, chapter two, problem 57. We're given a graph that is supposed to illustrate the position of a rabbit along a straight tunnel as a function of time. And um, what we're supposed to do is figure out both instantaneous velocities and average velocities at various times or at, at, in various time ranges. So in part A, we're, we're supposed to figure out what is the instantaneous velocity at a time of 10 seconds. And so you have to remember that instantaneous velocity Again, it's a kind of slope, but it's not the slope taken between two points which are very, very far spaced. It's the slope as determined by when the two points of that line that you're getting the slope of become infinitesimally close to each other. In calculus speak, that's what you're doing is taking the derivative. Okay, so if we're supposed to figure out what is the instantaneous velocity at 10 seconds, that's roughly here, and the instantaneous velocity is the slope of the line that would just graze the graph at this point. The good news for us is that this curve is basically straight at this point in space. And so we can estimate the slope of this line by figuring out how long is it straight for and more or less get the rise over the run here. Remember, the slope, of course, is rise over run. And since we're really only doing an estimate here, if you're not super precise, I wouldn't worry terribly about this. I estimate that it rises approximately six meters between uh, a time of, of zero and 20 seconds. And so you might estimate this as 0 0.3 meters per second, plus or minus, let's say 10 or 20 percent. That would be pretty good. So 0 0.3 meters per second. Part B, we're supposed to do the same thing this time at 30 seconds, which is more or less here. Whatever we get, we know it should be a number that's significantly bigger than 0 0.3. You can just tell by looking at the slope. Anywhere along this section here, this, it's much steeper. Again, we're going to figure out what is the slope of a line that just passes through this point here. And the best way to do that might be to extend that imaginary line as far as you can to figure out what is the rise over the run. So this is the slope for A. For B, we have a slope. I estimate this to be about 25 meters over the course of about 15 seconds. So 25 meters over 15 seconds. And if you work out that math, that's approximately 1.7 meters per second. So notably bigger than in part A. OK. Now, in parts C, D, and E, we're supposed to go back and figure out what the average velocity is. This isn't necessarily what is the velocity at any given point, but over a finite time range, what is, what is the velocity average out to be? So between 0 and 5 seconds, between 0 and 5, that's in that range where the curve is basically a straight line. So we should actually get the same number that we got in part A. So I'll just put same as A, about 0 0.3 meters per second. Part D, we're supposed to figure out what is the average velocity between 25 and 30 seconds. So between about here and here. Um, now, if you, if you are really, really sloppy and you look at this, it looks like it rises about five meters over the course of five seconds. And so you might guess it's got to be around one meter per second. But if you look a little bit more closely, it actually rises a bit more. It rises more like seven meters. So here we'd estimate the slope, at least I estimate the slope, as about uh, seven meters over the course of five seconds. In other words, 1.4 meters per second or so. Again, don't worry if you're off by plus or minus 0.2 or so. Finally, in part E, what is the average velocity between four, sorry, between 40 and 50 seconds, so roughly from near the top to near the bottom, estimating what that rise over run, in this case it's not really a rise, it's a decrease, but you get the idea that rise is just negative. Uh, here, the rise over the run, I estimate to be approximately dropping by 10 meters, in other words, minus 10 meters of rise over those last 10 seconds. In other words, about minus one meter per second. Minus one meter per second. So whether or not you got 1.1 or 0 0.9, that wouldn't matter. But keep in mind that minus sign is important because the position definitely comes back. In other words, the displacement is negative, so the velocity is negative.